one of whom is a former West Point fighter. Steve DiMartino fighting for Alpha Tau Omega was a cadet at West Point, fought for the Army Academy, and boy, he's got that look about him, doesn't he? And he'll be going up against Billy Muir from Phi Delta Theta, and Billy Muir is unbeaten in Slugfest. He has fought in Slugfest twice in 88 and 90, did not fight in 89. He's looking for his third victory as we look at Sean DiMartino out of Hollywood, Florida. He's a building construction major. Sean will uh, again have a disadvantage and a height disadvantage in this fight. He'll go in at 5'11", giving away two inches to his opponent, Billy Moore. And here's Billy Muir, who is from Miami, an engineering major. Well, I'll tell you, Larry, things are... Uh, in terms of quality fighting, things have been picking up. Well, it really has with the bigger guys, and we saw it start to turn, I think, a little bit. At 149, we had two excellent fights, one by Eric, one, one by Eric Talbaca from SIGEP, the other by Phi Delta Theta's Brendan O'Hare. Two well-fought, well-contested split decisions. Since then, we've had some good matchups, and here, Phi Delta Theta going up against Alpha Tau Omega to try to settle things in the second of our 179 pound classification bouts. Mike Sawyer with the final instructions of the fighters. Actually, that was a little bit unsettling because in the last fight, because uh, Carrera, excuse me, Camaro was down there for a while. It does scare you anytime anyone's down there for a while, particularly someone who hasn't fought very much. They have, they're not experienced. They, you don't feel like they can shake the cobwebs or what have you. So good to see that Albert Camaro left the ring area under his own power. DiMartino, the fighter in all black, is the one who's got uh, former uh, experience. He's got former experience as a West Point boxer, bouncing around now. And a long looping overhand right missed everything, but boy, he's just firing leather. He's going after Muir in the corner. Throwing a lot of punches, but only one or two connected. Not much damage done by DiMartino. Again, uh, DiMartino wearing what looks to be a very cumbersome right knee brace, but it doesn't uh, head bother him so far. He came out with both barrels, and now he's firing again. There's an uppercut that misses, but just barely. So far, Billy Muir content mostly to play defense, see what DiMartino can offer. And that's not a bad tactic if you can wear the other guy down, but here's uh, DiMartino teeing off again in the corner. The question is how many are getting through because Billy Muir is going up with the gloves and uh, picking a lot of those punches off. What looks to be doing a lot of damage, really, is not doing that much. Muir is fighting a nice fight defensively. And he just got in with a good right-hand lead, followed by a left. I think DiMartino's thrown a lot of punches, but not many have gotten through, and the ones that did hit right on the headgear. DiMartino backs off from a right hand that just grazed him, as Billy Muir now is looking to find the range. DiMartino has been the aggressor from the get-go. And it continues to be that way. We are looking to find some kind of an opening as DiMartino again unloading leather in the near corner. But again, you have to wonder, Larry, how much of that is getting through. That was one of his better flurries. He came underneath the hands a couple of times, got shots in on the chin of Billy Muir. Muir just has to start throwing more punches. Uh, he's got two more rounds, and maybe he does want to see if DiMartino will tire himself out. But round one is definitely Sean DiMartino's round. Basically, by default, Billy Muir only connected about three punches. Perfectly, uh, perfectly summed up because uh, DiMartino went out there and uh, just kept throwing leather. Although I don't think that at any time he really hurt Billy. But he was the aggressor and he was doing all the work. So he's going to get the round. We watch some of the action here. Billy Muir keeping his hands up, picking them off. That one got through. The first two did not. That punch scores, but the next one is picked off, as is that one. So there you see one out of three, one out of four punches getting through. The difference is DiMartino probably threw 40 in the yeah. round, maybe 50. So he connected 10 times. B Billy Muir might have been batting 500, but he was three for six. That's right. And in a case like this, now Billy Muir has weathered uh, a big first round barrage, not, not a barrage in terms, again, of effective punches, but a lot of punches. 
And if you're going to look for uh, reasons to be optimistic in his corner, it's because he did exactly that. Now he's had a, a whole first look at the guy and can measure him. Let's see what happens. Well, that's what it looks like he's trying to do. He flicked out a couple of lefts, came over with a right, but DiMartino got out of the way, backed off. DiMartino now with a lunge going after Muir. Got him with a good right that time, but Muir picked off another right cross. And now DiMartino jabbing low as Billy Muir. You can see the schooling he got at West Point, though. When he goes to the body. DiMartino not strictly a headhunter. Got a couple of good body shots in there. That can work on you by round three. side to side but he's, he's staying right in front and uh, another part of this one is that uh, DiMartino might get a little bit frustrated oh Muir with a left and a right that followed but actually it whistled by DiMartino just get out of the way in time no damage done DiMartino coming back both fighters at center ring again Muir with a white tank top DiMartino in black with the red knee brace DiMartino, good defensive fighter, even though he's thrown all those punches. When Muir gets off, DiMartino leans back. If the blow does hit him, it doesn't hit with as much authority. He's doing a very nice job technically. DiMartino found the range and a right, but again, Muir got the glove up. DiMartino poking toward the chest. One, two, flurry by DiMartino, who looks to his corner for some advice. I think Muir he wanted, trying to come back. John, I think he might have wanted to know how much time was left yeah. in the round. Indication he might be tiring slightly. For the record, exactly 10 seconds now. Muir punching, but finding nothing but the air at the end of two rounds. It's DiMartino. Well, Sean DiMartino fighting in the second round a lot differently than he did in round one. In round one, he came out flailing from the very beginning, throwing a lot of punches here in round two. Much more measured. There's a decent left hand by Billy Muir. Not a lot of starch on it, though. And they come back looking at each other with a lot more respect. Muir picks one off, picks off another. They get tangled just a bit there, but when Billy Muir did get off good punches, the ability of DiMartino to lean out of the way and either not get hit or just with glancing shots has made Muir's offensive attack basically ineffective, and DiMartino has definitely scored much better with his punch. Yeah, and you get the feeling, too, that Muir is more trying to weather a storm, and DiMartino is uh, totally confident of what the outcome is going to be. I think they're both fighting well. I think Billy Muir just doesn't have the pop in his punches that DiMartino does. He's not getting hit a lot. He's probably done the best job of any fighter tonight blocking punches. He just hasn't thrown any. There's a Muir couple got of good through there, right over the top of the left and the right. DiMartino did the catching in that exchange. And now DiMartino continues to be the aggressor. Muir has to do a lot of wonderful things in this final round if he's going to pull out a victory. And when you do that, you open yourself up because you're going to take a little bigger swing, try to load up for what you think is your best punch and perhaps leave yourself open. What looked to be a fair right by Billy Muir was picked off by DiMartino on the shoulder. Martino does have some pretty good boxing skills. Matter of fact, the only punches he's having trouble with are those that come right straight over the top. Of course, that can be a nightmare for even the best fighter. Muir behind in the bout. Has to be the aggressor. DiMartino, again in all black with the knee brace, pretty much has it his own way. Round three. Muir over the top with a left. No damage. DiMartino again now on the attack. But I, th I think he is showing signs of slight tiredness. He's certainly not uh, the same uh, aggressor, ferocious aggressor he was in the first round. Muir has had his best round connected early, got a nice combination there. And I, it seems like DiMartino's basically gone to the four corners. He's not throwing many punches, 
He just wants the clock to run out. He feels like if he doesn't get tagged big time here in the third, he should be the winner, and I agree with him. Well, there'll be no knockout. So it looks like Martino off the Di Martino off the first two rounds is going to have this one. And there it is, the end of the fight. John DiMartino against Billy Muir. And I don't think we have to do too much speculating on that one, do we, Larry? No, you really don't, although I think Billy Muir showed very well. I loved his defensive skills, his ability to pick off punches. Sean DiMartino just tried harder, basically, at least in terms of his offensive effort. He tried to do more things. He threw more punches with a lot of authority behind them. He kept the pressure on throughout the fight. And Alpha Ta Omega, which had just one win going into this fight, is about to pick up number two, I'm sure. You see some inside fighting in round three. Muir picking those fight punches off. A one gets through a little bit of a left hook, but not much there. Well, I get the feeling that DiMartino had something behind him, and Muir, who certainly was game and was not going to bounce away from anything or walk away from anything, just didn't have anything to give back. I don't think there was a point in those uh, three rounds where he actually threw something with, that would have phased Di Mar Di, uh, uh, DiMartino. The high point probably was when Billy Muir hit a couple of combinations to start the third round and uh, probably won the third round, but I think DiMartino took the first two rounds easily. DiMartino and fairly easily Wins in the 170 to 179 division. Actually, when we say that again, we should remind you periodically there is no single winner of a division. There are two fights per weight breakdown, which is not in the classic sense. But in the 170 to 179, two fights now in the books, and Sean DiMartino winning the last one. We've got lots more action coming your way as we're at Slugfest 1991 at the University of Florida, and you've got it on Sports Channel.